Welcome to the Ideas on Stage podcast, your regular insight into leadership communication. Hey, George, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me down. I'm very, very pleased to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Me too. And and George, I have to tell you, I don't know if you remember, but one of the reasons why I'm super excited about this conversation with you today is because we met each other some time ago, maybe a few years ago. I, it was my very first day I was attending a, a business accelerator program and you were there and I sat next to you and we got to know each other and then we did lunch together. And then what happened is that after that session, that was my very first session, it wasn't for you, you disappeared. So I never saw you again for a few weeks and then I asked around and I learned that you were so successful that you, you immediately moved on to the, to the follow up program. So congratulations on your Thank success you. yeah. and on everything you are doing. And yeah, I'm super excited to, to chat with you today and to learn from you as okay. well. Yeah, I remember that really well, actually. I remember us sitting outside in the park and uh, having some lunch and yeah, it was, uh, I think that was level, level one and then I went on to level two and it was, yeah. But it was good that we kept in touch, so I'm glad. Yeah, absolutely. And, and today with you, George, I want to talk about video and particularly how to communicate effectively on camera, on, on video. That's your area of expertise. And so first, could you please, could you tell us why do you think video is so important? Video is it's a great tool. I mean, obviously, I will say that because I'm a, a video production professional, but I truly think it's the best medium for communicating your message. Um, it's, it's the best tactic. So of all the tactics you have in your armory, that can be creating amazing presentations, you know, to do in, in person. It can be designing a website. It can be writing emails. Video is probably one of the tools that works best, in my view. Um, there's quite a few reasons for that. Um, I think as a medium, it's, it's pretty fantastic because it's very versatile. You know, you can communicate emotion, you can um, communicate a story, it's engaging, it's exciting, you can use sound, you can use, uh, you know, visuals. It's, it's got a lot to it. There's lots of elements that condense into a video that make it really good. Um, but for me, it's just uh, as a as a as a as a tactic as a medium, it's probably the one that stands out the most because at the moment there's lots of different ways you can communicate with people, um, but it's very very hard to grab people's attention because we're all being you know, served so many commercial messages every day. We're getting bombarded by people's emails, by looking at websites, this sort of thing. That video really stands out. Um, so that, that's the reason why I think you should have it as one of your tactics. I'm not saying it's the only tactic, but I'm saying that it is something you should be thinking about pretty early on in your journey. Yeah, no, and I agree with you. Video is definitely super powerful. I, I don't think, and, and I think I have to disagree when you say that, but I'm just joking, but of course you say that video is the most powerful thing you can do. I say that a live presentation is the most powerful thing you can do, but course, no, yeah. j- just joking. Yeah. Video no, I like it. No, but then again, you know, at the moment, for example, video is a way of presenting. And if you can't do a presentation in person, which is obviously difficult at the moment, um, then video can be a good replacement. So even if you agree that pre- presenting and, you know, presentations is the best, if you can't do that, then video is a good option. Absolutely, absolutely. And based on your experience, Joe, you've been working over the last years with so many clients. What, what do you think are some of the, the key mistakes that people make when, when it comes to communicating on video and also creating video content either for themselves or for their businesses? Yeah. Video is, I mentioned it being a tactic, you know, it is one sort of weapon in your arsenal. Um, However, I think that's one of the problems that people see it as just being this isolated tool. They don't really look at it as part of their wider um, tactics. You know, so if they are, uh, whatever your objective is, whether that's I need to grow, you know, get more customers or I need to make more sales or I need to reach a different demographic or I need to get 
build authority for my business, whatever that objective is, video is the way that you can achieve that. But it's not just about creating a beautiful looking film. It's not much as I'd love to say that it's all about the way it looks, you know, that's just, that's just a given. It's got to be great and, you know, impactful, but actually it's got to be really tied into your overall, um, you know, strategy. Mm. And probably the biggest mistakes people make are approaching video just as a sort of afterthought. So you go, oh, we got the website done and, you know, we've, we've managed to work out our messaging and we've got a great sales deck to present to people. Oh, we probably need a video because our, you know, our, our competitor has a video or everyone's doing video, aren't they? And then you just try and rush through and get a video done as quickly as possible in a sort of haphazard way, a reactive way. Whereas actually what you should be doing is starting with a really solid um, video marketing strategy and decide why am I doing this? How can I get the most out of this video? And think of it in, in sort of three parts. And this is the big thing that really video, it's broken down, like a successful video marketing project is built, broken down into three parts. There's the strategy, that's working out how you're gonna actually what is the point of this video? What am I going to do with it? It's creating the video itself. And then the, the part that gets overlooked the most is the amplification of that video. So it'd be like if you created a sales presentation, but it looked amazing, but then you never actually went and presented it to anybody. It's not going to do anything for you. It's the same with video. You know, you could create an amazing video, but if you don't have a plan for getting that video in front of your customers, then it will do nothing. It's like having a TV advert and then you don't put it on TV. You know, it's, it's that kind of approach. So having a plan for how you're going to leverage that content is probably the, the biggest thing that, that people forget to do. And, and they all do it as well. It's, I'm not talking, it could be a, 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 a sort of startup SME or a solopreneur all the way through to some of the biggest household brands and people make that mistake. So that's, I think that's, I'll leave it at that as sort of the biggest one. There's lots of other things. I could no, probably no, that, that's, that's, that's great. And you mentioned three parts, strategy, the actual creation of the video, and also yeah. the, I guess, the distribution. And, and also this is connect, very much connected to something that I've learned from you. Some time ago, you kindly gave a presentation for, for another event that we organized at Ideas on Stage Presentation Week. Mm -hmm. And you taught us and, and participants five key principles for creating great content that, that resonates with, with your audience. Could you tell us more about these, these five principles? Yeah, okay. So I suppose the, the three parts to a campaign, that's the kind of mechanics of it. So mm -hmm. if you're gonna go and do a video, you go, right, plan it out. We call it plan, craft, amplify. Plan it out, craft it, amplify it. That's the sort of mechanics, right? Mm. But really, for a video to, to be successful and for it to engage an audience, um, you need to create something that will, will resonate with them. You know, that it will feel like it's speaking directly to them and, and you know, touch part of them um, and make sense for them. So with that in mind, you know, we started to sort of scratch our heads about what, what does that condense down to? You know, what is the sort of secret elements of a really successful piece of video content? And we, we decided that it was based around this idea of creating resonance. Mm. So how do you create resonance with your audience? And we identified five key steps to that, five key elements. And when we create content now, we always benchmark our content against these five elements. Mm. So the five elements are having focus. So that's um, deciding, you know, why is this video being created? What is the objective of it? And how am I going to measure the results of that objective? And, and crucially, who is the audience? So that is the focus, you know, get laser sighted. Vanilla content that speaks to everybody speaks to nobody. So, you know, get, get focused, is it? entrepreneurs you're going after is it consumers you're going after is it other businesses what is it your you know who is your audience so that's first one focus uh, the second part is having a good hook hmm. this this applies really across the board it's not just video i think 
um, you know, it can be your, your sales decks, it could be your website, it could be um, how you present yourself in a quick elevator pitch. What is the hook? Like, why am I going to want to watch this video? What's in it for me? So that really comes down to what is the idea behind this piece of video content? Uh, am I uh, creating a really snappy advert that's going to grab someone's attention? Am I creating a brand film for my business that tells my story? Um, but whatever it is, you've got to hook the, the audience in. So we've got focus and, focus and um, hook. Uh, the next one is you have to create an impact. Mm. So there's lots of ways to create impact. Um, mainly it can be down to making sure you do a good job on that video. So making sure that it's um, impactful. Um, that could be the, the way that you um, format it, making sure that it's right for the right channels. So if you're going to put it on social media, making sure that it fits with social media, you're going to put it on your website make sure it fits with your website. Um, but also just in the way you sort of reel people in, you know, it doesn't hurt to literally have the first three seconds being really, really punchy and exciting because people's attention spans are so short that, you know, you have to create impact. You've got to create a memorable piece of content so we've got focus uh, we've got hook we've got impact then we get on to probably the most important part which is storytelling i'm interested in that yeah. storytelling is is a big one so um i mean you know you can go back beyond the video you're creating and, and think actually about your company's story because that's what you're actually representing so um a story is uh yeah stories have been used obviously, since the dawn of man. I mean, you know, from sitting around a campfire, telling each other stories about the ancestors through to modern day when we're, you know, sending people um, videos on, you know, via WhatsApp or whatever. It's basically the same principles of good storytelling apply. Um, it's really simple, you know, have a beginning, have a middle, have an end. It goes, sometimes it seems obvious, but a lot of people forget that. Um, think about, you know, how you're introducing this, that's your beginning. What, you know, what is the, the sort of the concept you're trying to get across? What is the bones of what you're actually trying to say and how are you going to conclude that? That's often a simple way to do it. Making sure the messaging is pretty simple. Um, we normally say start with three core messages that you're trying to get in there because people's memories are terrible. If you try and do more than that, they just don't remember. Um, you can go more, you can go to five. But if you start going to, to try to cram too many things into one video, the story will get lost uh, and you'll, you know, you, you'll forget what you people will forget what you're talking about. Um, and also just think about what is it you're trying to present from yourself as a company? Mm. You know, um, in today's world, people care a lot about the companies that they're buying from, you know, purpose is important. Um, so what is it that you're trying to represent? What is your mission? You know what is it that you're trying to project out into the world and that is the story you're telling with the videos um you can get into all kinds of other stuff as well to do with storytelling mechanics but um if you haven't read um donald miller's story brand is a good place to start that book if you want to find out about good storytelling yeah i have um, i have read the book amazing and yeah. i also highly recommend it to to our listeners yeah it's a great one um so yeah so so those are the those are the four and then the final one um so we've got I'll recap. I always recap because it makes it easier. So it's got... great. It's great in communication, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> People are like sinks in. Okay. So you're trying to create resonance with your target customers. The way you do it is you've got to have solid focus. You've got to have a great hook, lots of impact, great storytelling. And then the final one is reach. And I, I sort of spoke briefly about that earlier. Reach is critical with any video because how are you going to get that video in front of the people that count? If you just throw it up on your website, it might do nothing for you because if no one's coming to your website, then it's mm -hmm. going to be completely ineffective. So you might be a company that has such huge traffic going to your website that that is the place to get reach, but probably you're going to have to do some type of digital marketing. Um, if you're in the B to B world, then that's going to look like sending out email campaigns to people, um, giving that video to your sales guys to mm -hmm. actually use as part of their outreach or even to close deals. You know, if, if people are on the fence and they're not sure, you can send them videos to help. Um, it can be uh, doing uh, YouTube advertising, Facebook, Instagram advertising, LinkedIn advertising. It can be about 
putting it on LinkedIn and trying to build authority, you know, there's loads and loads of ways, uh, lots and lots of ways, but you have to have reach with that video um, because all the other four things will count for nothing if nobody sees it. Be like you spend all this money on creating an amazing video and then no one sees it. And so it's not likely to do very much for you. Yeah, as you said before, it's like creating a fantastic presentation, but then you never take the opportunity to deliver it to anybody yeah. and it doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. Exactly. And I also particularly liked your tip, your storytelling tip about the three key messages. And I agree with you 100%. In short term memory, with all of us, we find it very hard to remember and process roughly three pieces of information. It's the rule of three in communication. Yeah. And also, I, oh, please, you go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that, um, I mean, it's so writing, creating a video about your company is such a great exercise in condensing your message. Mm. And it's difficult. It's really, really difficult. I mean, we're actually doing our own um, video at the moment and we are going back and forth over the script because you just want to get everything in there. You, know, you want to explain like how great you are and all the things you do. But, but really that's the worst thing you can do is trying to put too much in, you know, video is really good for removing confusion from customers. Mm. Um, I say that a lot because when you're shopping, whether you're shopping for, um, a new phone or a, you know, a new pair of headphones, or if you're looking for um, a website builder or a plumber or whatever it might be, you know, you're, you're doing all of your homework, you're looking online, you're going and looking at people's websites. It's sort of information overload. Um, it's really, really difficult. And you go into, you know, you get analysis paralysis where you've looked at so many things and you can't decide this one versus that one. Um, also, one of the, the sort of my big bugbears is websites that have lots and lots and lots of text on. So, you know, if somebody comes to your website and then they, they start to try and work out a bit about you and then you take them on this massively long journey, it's not really going to, you know, get them to buy from you. You're basically just confusing them and, and kind of turning them off. Whereas if you have a video that's maybe one to two minutes long, that just gives them the window into your business. Because in that short fraction of time, they can learn everything they need to know about you and decide whether or not it's worth going further into your website, you know, receiving a call from you, asking for a quote, whatever it might be, but you're giving them that snapshot and it's, it's kind of like a tease yeah. to get them excited about you. So with videos, it shouldn't be a very long explaining everything that's, you know, you bring to the table. It should be a, well, it's a sales, it's a sales video at the end of the day. All videos are really mainly about sales and marketing. So try and grab them, reel them in. And then if they want to learn more, they can do that. You know, yeah. By that. yeah. And on, on this point, George, how long should, what, what, what would you recommend? If somebody wants to tell the story behind their, their brand, their business, what they do, how long should a video be? It's really, um, it's a really interesting question. That. And, um, there are some general rules of thumb about this type of thing, but um, it is a bit of a how long is a piece of string question. So, you know, we've, we've created videos for people that are in essence one second long. Mm. Right? That's at the shortest end of the spectrum. So, um, wow. yeah, you can say, so, so we've created um, adverts for um, food brands where what it is is essentially just a still image where certain elements of it have been animated, but they're on a loop and yeah. that loop is only a second long. So that's wow. a second long video that loops. It's basically, a, it's a GIF, you know, you turn it into a GIF so that it can be used in, a, you know, your email footer, it can be used on social media, it can be used in lots of different places. So that's one second at the shortest end of the spectrum. Um, but then, you know, at the, at the far end of the spectrum, you might have companies doing Facebook lives that mm. are like, hours and hours and hours long. I think the longest broadcast online video is something like four days long because you can do a live broadcast now. I think it was, a, it was someone where they were showing back to back, I think it was Game of Thrones and then commenting on the episodes as they were watching them, you know, and that was the right. live stream. So, you know, you shouldn't be constrained, but at the same time, you know, for advertorial 
videos where you're um, really are, it's, a, it's an advert, you're interrupting someone's experience. So they might be on social media and you're hitting them with an advert. That needs to be obviously very short. Mm. On TV, they might be sort of 15 to 20 seconds long. So you shouldn't be going longer than that, really. Mm. Um, YouTube adverts, for example, you can have six seconds, um, you know, up to sort of 10, 15 seconds. Um, whereas if you're doing a more of a storytelling piece, then normally one to two minutes is what we say is a good rule of thumb. It's, it's a strange thing, but normally if you go over two minutes, people just start to drop off and get bored. I don't know what it is. It's really hard to sustain people beyond two minutes. Yeah. I think it's because you're asking them to stop what they're doing and engage with you. And when people are online, they're just, they're in such a rush all the time. They're just, just a few seconds, something else yeah. to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think this is also connected to what you said before, that then that's also why people find it hard to, to simplify the message because often we know so much about our subject, our, our business, how we, we can solve a problem for our clients that we think that everything is important. And yeah. so we need to communicate everything. Yeah. But I like what you said that if if everything is important, nothing is important for yeah. the audience. And, so true. And, and I can see because it applies 100% to presentations as well and, and to videos and as you mentioned to website. And actually, I heard you speak about the, and I guess it's something that you've learned from StoryBrand, the book, mm -hmm. the grunt test. Yeah, yeah, the grunt test, yeah. Could you yeah. tell us more about it? Yeah. Um, so the grunt test is now it used to be called other things which are no longer PC, um, like your, the NAN test, I think was what it used mm. to be. Called. Oh, right. Um, but you know, that's not really fair. So, um, <laughs> I think that we call it the grunt test because it's, does it, you know, is it easy enough that, um, a 12 year old could understand it? Is it easy enough that, you know, someone with literally no, knowledge of you, your business industry could understand what you're saying. If it passes that, then you've done well. And again, this is one of those things where people, um, they sort of forget that a video versus say a sales presentation, it has to be put into really simplistic terms. And if, if you use any kind of insider language at all, people will find it hard to follow. So, so for example, you know, if I was talking about us, I would say, um, you know, we're a, a video, you know, and this would be the, probably the wrong way to say it, it would be, um, you know, we're um, a specialist strategic video content agency um, working with um, high profile, you know, brand marketers um, to create, um, I don't know, video, video content to drive sales awareness and, you know, um, customer acquisition for example yeah. right now that's not actually that bad but you you find it difficult to make it bad because you know what to do I, yeah. yeah it's hard <laughs> to make it bad but but you know there are certain words in there like customer acquisition yeah. you know we all inherently sort of know what that is but do we should i really include that in a video isn't it just we help you get more sales or we help you you know get more customers yeah um, and it, it's quite tempting to find, add in too much of those sort of insider terms that are very specialist to your, your company. And I think this, this goes back to um, when you go and present or if you're doing an elevator pitch, um, you, know, you meet someone at a networking event, they might not be from your target audience. You know, they might not be your ideal customer. They might, you know, have nothing to do with you and not even understand your business. So if you were talking to them, you'd have to dumb down what you're saying because they might not understand all the ins and outs and technical aspects of what you do. However, that doesn't mean that they're not going to um, listen to what you have to say and then refer you to somebody else. Yeah. You know, so it'd be like if you go to a, a dinner party and you meet a friend of a friend who is got nothing to do with business whatsoever, maybe they're a doctor. Now, the way you might explain what you do to them is kind of the way you should explain in a video because, you know, in the same way that doctor might refer you to somebody that they do know from the business world or from marketing or whatever, um, you know, when someone watches your video, they might be able to refer on. So you kind of have to make it as simple as possible. Yeah. Um, 
and mainly just because when you're watching something it's really easy to get confused very quickly so you've got to keep it simple yeah and and i can tell you george it applies a hundred percent to presentations as well this i agree with you it's not about being simplistic it's really about finding a universal language that everybody can understand yeah. And, and I can tell you, for example, when we work with the clients, say that we need to create a compelling message for their presentations, and then they, they say something to me in terms of what they do, and, and often it's very complicated. I understand nothing about it, too technical, insider language, jargon. But then if I ask, look, how would you explain the same idea to your son, for example? Yeah. Then magic happens. Yeah. That's then, exactly it. Yeah, themselves, they find a way to make it very simple, to make it engaging, maybe by using an example or a story, and it changes everything. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing is, I think that um, trying to keep what you're saying in your videos centered on your customers and not on you. Yes. I think it's another simple trick. One of the best um, uses of video is to create a company, a company video. Just, mm. I'll call it a company video just for simplicity. It's just that video that you see that people will have on their website that has their story in a nutshell, you know, explains what they do. You know, we are small films. We make videos for companies. Uh, you are on ideas on stage. We help people create amazing presentations. Yes, yeah, so it's that story. But sometimes what happens is people make it too much about themselves and not about the, the problems that they're solving. So a good trick there is you just literally start by painting a picture of of what the world is for your customers yeah. so you know i can imagine for you it might be something like um um everyone wants to communicate what they do really really clearly but it's very very difficult to get your message across um when you don't have the right tools to do that you know we help people to condense their message and create great presentations and then that helps them to do X, Y, Z, you know? Yeah. So it's like, here's the world before, um, here's how we can help you and here's what the world will look like afterwards once we've helped you with that problem. Um, and that's often like a good, a good technique when you're creating a video, start it off with your customers rather than, you know, we are ideas and stage and we are the best at creating presentations for people and working out, how, you know, helping people to do that. It's a bit, you know, people don't like it when you talk about yourself too much. Of course, like of course. About them. No, absolutely. And that's another great thing, which is 100% connected to, to presentations as well. It's for videos. For pre We always say that presentations need to meet five, like you, you've got like five yeah. principles, also for us, five principles. And we call them the presentation score principles. Like you yeah. need to score with your presentations, like in football. And the R stands for relevant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it has to be all a presentation yeah. and a video yeah. always has to be relevant to yeah. your audience you need to start with them not with yeah. yourself exactly yeah. yeah and that's why you know we say start you've got to identify your audience because the other thing is we're you know you're not i'm not talking about tv adverts here but even mm -hmm. tv adverts you know they're not they're not aimed at everyone you know, there's a reason why certain adverts play before certain TV programs, mm -hmm. because they know the types of people that are watching those programs. Someone mm -hmm. who's watching, you know, X Factor might not be the same person that's watching Nightmare, Nightmare Neighbours Next Door or, I don't know, Home Renovations or whatever. So they, they know that those are the kind of people. So you would have before location, 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 for example, you'll have adverts from like B&Q or Wix. They'll show them because it's all about home renovation. Whereas X Factor, you might get more of like adverts from Pepsi and people like that because they know it's a bit more mainstream. It's the same in the online space, but, but, but that condensed down to like the absolute, you have to be so laser sighted on your audience because you cannot appeal to everybody. So you decide who is your niche? Who is it that you work with? Where are you going to go and find them? Like, where do they, what part of the internet are they going to be in? You know, are they on social media? Are they on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram? Are they looking at certain websites? Are they using certain platforms? What is it they're doing? That's how I'm going to reach them. And here's the message that we're going to try and communicate to them. And you can get really, really laser focused. And the more that it's relevant to them, just like you're saying, the more it's going to resonate with them. And the more likely they are to engage with you and just pay attention to you.
Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and George, also, could you give us, I want to just move to another topic, which is the actual delivery on camera. Could you give us, I know you've worked with, with so many people, experienced, uh, and also yourself. You, you, I know that you moved from a, a situation where you always were behind the scenes, where now, for example, now we are using a video and you, you create videos for yourself. Do you have any tips for communicating and delivering your message effectively on camera? Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, my first tip is, um, go and record yourself on camera and start putting out videos. Um, you can't underestimate how powerful it is. The authority that you can create um, by putting yourself on camera is, is it's like gold dust. You know, you can't replicate that. Um, you know, as you say, I, I, I came from a, you know, before I founded Small Films, I came from a 14 year career in television I was a director, so I was always behind the camera. You know, so there was always a professional presenter, you know, in front of the camera, and they knew what they were doing. That's their job, and they were doing it all the time. And I just had to direct them and try and get the best performance out of them. And I know how hard it is because with all those presenters, there was very few of them that were actually that good. You know, like comfortable, the, yeah. No, like like some of them are good, but they, you know, often they'll they'll take several takes to get it right. You know, they're they find it difficult sometimes to get their words out. They're just like normal human beings. Um, it's not easy to, to do that type of thing. Um, but what they do have is a lot of charisma and that's really, really important. Um, so it was very unnatural for me to put myself on camera. And to be honest, to begin with, I, I didn't enjoy it at all. Um, mm. I found it really awkward. I also had that, the typical things everyone gets, which is I had imposter syndrome. I was like, who am I to talk on camera? oh God, everybody's going to look at me and think that I'm a, a show off, you know, I don't know, all those things. But then once you start to see the outcome of doing it uh, and how it does actually reinforce your credibility, um, it leads to opportunities. Um, it, it helps generally with the overall objectives of your business. Um, now I, I just look for opportunity when I can to, to do it. Um, I would say that, if you, you know, if you're thinking about doing it, definitely start to um, practice. That's probably the, the, the biggest tip, really. Mm. You will not like it the first time you do it. I'd be very <laughs> surprised. And if you do, then you're born for this um, <laughs> because most people don't enjoy it um, to begin with. It's, it's quite awkward. And also your first performance versus, you know, fast forward a year. And once you have lots of practice, you'll be amazed at how bigger difference it makes. Um, so, you know, when you practice, I would say just a really good technique for that actually is just get your iPhone, you know, or your, your smartphone and just get out there. Just, just get out in nature away from people. Um, so you don't feel self-conscious and just start, you know, doing the selfie and just recording. Um, sometimes that kind of content actually works really, really well. Mm. Um, but yeah, just start to, download all of the things that are in your head and the things that you're thinking about and that will actually help to to solidify the message you're trying to say and, and it'll help you to work out the things that seem to work and the things that don't um, I mean the reason that people go on camera is you are trying to build authority that's predominantly the reason why so you're trying to share your your thoughts on a particular subject and to establish yourself as an expert in that area. That's normally what people are doing it for. Um, so you have to have things to say, so it's a good idea to obviously have a bit of a content plan of things that you might want to talk about. Um, but again, it's, it's not really about, don't overthink it. It's better to just, just do it. try, yeah. Um, and, and you will find that um, sometimes something will work won't work that you thought oh, I gave that so much thought I really thought that through and I and I you know and I got the right camera and I got the perfect angle and it was just my best performance and everything and then you can like put it out there and get absolutely no engagement whatsoever and then you'll do something where you'll just um <laughs> I don't know just 
off the top of your head, think of something as you're walking along and you'll shoot it on your iPhone and it'll look really bad, but it'll get lots and lots of engagement. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's an element of just trying to trial and error, um, yeah. you know, not, not worrying too much about it. Mm-hmm. I, I can relate to everything you've said. For example, like now I've been creating content on video for, for a few years. And when I started, At that point, I already had a lot of experience presenting face-to-face presentations. And to be very honest, the very first time I had a camera in front of me, like it took me some time. I I I found it a bit difficult to breathe, and the 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 way you communicate was was very different and compared to maybe a face-to-face a live presentation. So I also had to adjust, but I agree with you. It takes practice and the more you do it, the, the better it becomes. Yeah. And, and especially, as you said, it, it doesn't take like 10 years. If, yeah. if you do it and if you are consistent and then the transformation you can go through in terms of your ability to, to communicate your ideas, even on camera, on video, in just a few months, I would say even just a few weeks, if you do it consistently, is remarkable. Definitely. I think um, there's, there's an aspect of it, which is consistency is pretty important. Um, you know, it's not like you have to do lots and lots and lots all the time, but you just want to keep the output up to a certain level. I think also to not underestimate the impact of just a few views, because mm. there are vanity metrics, as we call them, which is to do with how many views you get or what engagement you get or, you know, how many people comment, like, post, um, particularly when you're using LinkedIn, which a lot of people when they're doing this type of content would, would be using. But what you have to remember is you don't need a thousand views, 10,000 views. You don't need that many. What you need is one view of the right person. So sometimes you might go, oh, that video is crap. It only got a hundred views. That's happened with me. And then you get an inquiry from somebody who actually saw it and they say, I saw that video and I just thought, you know, wondered if you could do something for us. So what was that view worth? That was worth a lot. Whereas you could get something that was worth, you know, 10,000 views and actually you get nothing from it. So it's more, you know, as I say, tying back to that core objective, like why am I doing these authority pieces with video? Why am I putting myself on camera? Make sure you know what the objective is there. Um, For many of us, it will be, I want leads. You know, I just want leads to come in. I want inbound leads. But for others, it might not be that. It might be everybody sees our competitor as being, you know, slightly better than us or, you know, they've they've got more experience than us or more authority. So we need to, like, overturn that perception. Or it might be people think of us as being just a website company. Mm. But actually, we're so much more than that. Or you know, people think of us as just being a a plumbers, but actually, you know, we're a whole home renovation company and people don't know. So it's like, you can identify those objectives and then tie the video, the the series you're doing to an actual outcome. uh, And once you know what that outcome will be. So, but yeah, it it does come down to just practice, practice, practice. Um, And another thing to remember is that, like I'll get, I can offer a few tips on, how to present better on camera but one thing to remember (laughs) is um, that really it's the content that is going to um, do you justice it's not how you present on camera yeah that that you can work on but like if your content's crap then it won't make any difference you could be the best presenter in the world but if the content's not good then why would anybody watch it george i agree with you like a thousand percent. And, and that's exactly the same thing we say to our clients. For example, just to give an idea, when we work with our clients, we, we typically work over a number of sessions to create either a, a real presentation, maybe they have an important presentation coming up, or maybe they simply want to improve their public speaking or presentation skills. And we work together for a number of sessions. And I would say 80% of what we do together with our clients is content, making sure that they have a real compelling message. Because I agree with you, if that is not solid, then there is no public speaking technique and tip that that can allow you to to become a better presenter. So I'm glad that that also in your world, it's exactly the same thing. Yeah. And also, you know, um, 
it takes quite a lot of practice before you actually try and start to work out what your message really is. You know, so the reason I'm able to do an hour long, you know, call with you and talk about video and talk about, you know, the resonance method that we developed and all these sorts of things is that because I've, one, I've talked about it a lot on camera. I've also presented about it quite a lot. And it didn't always, my message wasn't always the way it is now. I started off with different things I was saying, you know, and I was testing them out on people and seeing sort of how they sounded and, and getting people's feedback. And it was through feedback that I landed on, okay, now these are the five things, you know, these are the five things actually at their essence. Um, so yeah, getting out there and practicing it and just making sure the content is, is, is good it is very important. Yeah. And again, also for you, if you think about your five things, hook and storytelling and reach and, and the others, yeah. then I'm sure that even within these five things, perhaps at the beginning you were using certain stories and certain analogies to illustrate some important points. And then you tested a few others and then you, yeah. you can see what works best, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, and, you know, obviously I've given you the top level, you know, the top level stuff, but when you go, when you, when we actually work with people, you know, and we're actually creating content for people, we're going much deeper. So each of those categories has got its own subcategories. So hook, you know, okay, what does makes up hook? We've got yeah. a whole list of stuff, you know, and, and there's lots of different ways of doing it. But when you, when you start to have that message and um, once you start to know what you're all about, you can actually, you know, you can plan out, content you, know, you can plan out six months worth of videos uh, based around the themes of the things that your company does or things you talk about or ins and outs of products you can build this sort of content plan and then it's quite easy to then riff off that and just come up with some ideas for, for video yeah. yeah and george from a from a technological perspective if somebody wants to get started and creating some content on video without using a professional crew like like yours yeah. do you have any tips and recommendations yeah, definitely i think we're we're so lucky um to be living in the time we're living in because you know we just take it for granted we're a bit blasé about the fact that we're walking around with these things in our pockets which um you know they have the knowledge of literally the entire human race at our fingertips you know you've got access and con you know you can connect with absolutely everyone wherever you want um you can do live broadcasts with this thing you know you could be at the top of like machu picchu and broadcast to the whole world from from this device and of course they've got amazing cameras uh, the, the the quality of the new smartphone cameras is out of this world you know the the lenses that they've got and the ability to record in things like slow motion 10, 15 years ago, you couldn't have done that without spending about hundred thousand pounds on a camera. You know, that's the difference. You know, the, the, the speed at which technology is advancing is, is phenomenal. So first of all, you have this thing. So don't worry too much about, um, to begin with going and buying cameras or anything like that, because you know, you're better off just getting into it first. And when you've got your smartphone, that's really good. But there are some really simple things from a technological perspective that you can do. Um, just improve the quality of that. So, first of all, it, you just go on Amazon. Well, I shouldn't probably promote Amazon, but go on an independent retailer, um, and you can pick up a load of bits and bobs that will help to improve the quality of of your video. So, there are a few aspects to, and this is about impact, by the way. This is the kind of core tenets of impact. Creating impact with video, there's a few different ways that you can make sure the quality is high. So one of the biggest um, issues normally is sound. Mm. So most people sort of, they get all of this sorted, uh, you know, they get the background and everything sorted out, but then the sound quality. And then they forget, really they forget this. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Now I'm guilty of this because I don't have one of those today. I've just, I'm winging it with my laptop, but, um, but, yeah, you can buy a little lapel mic, mic like that for £20, probably off Amazon. Um, so you can plug it straight into your phone. You've immediately got high quality sound. So you could be out and about walking with your phone. You could be at home, wherever you are, and you're going to get good quality sound. It won't be all tinny and reverberating and echoey and all that sort of stuff. So that's the first thing. Um, second one is buy a tripod of some kind. Um, just a little tripod. You can buy them with a little... Um, head on that will take your phone and just sort of clasp it like that 
So then you'll not have shaky, horrible shots. So if you're doing something like this, you can just place it on a table and then you'll have a nice shot. Um, if you're doing things out and about, you can either buy a selfie stick. I mean, you're not gonna look cool. I'll just say that right now, but, but it will be a good, good shot. Um, so you can buy a selfie stick or you can even buy uh, for probably less than hundred pounds, um, a gimbal. So a little stabilizer for your phone. And that will mean that you're walking around and it will just be this perfect gliding, soft, expensive looking shot, which is just great. Um, so there's sort of two little things. And then generally speaking, when you're trying to um, look at, you know, I I'm composing my shot here. I mean, you can see I've done my best here within the confines of my flat, but um, it's just making sure the background is not too messy. You know, it's quite simple. Like you've got a nice shot there because it's just, it's a simple shot. It's not just detracting from you. Like in, in many ways, I've not even noticed what's in your background because I don't want to be, I don't want my eyes to be drawn to like lots of messy books and stuff like that. So just think about trying to make your background a little bit uh, clearer um, and then introducing as much light as possible is normally the other one. So simple way to do that is just get close to a window. Um, or in my case, I can't get close to a window. So I've just stuck a desk lamp next to me. Yeah, me too, yeah. <laughs> So, you know, I mean, I don't know if it's going to make much difference, but it's just yeah. a little bit of difference, you know, just a lamp. Um, so, you know, and then obviously if you want to start getting a bit more technical, you can buy lights, um, quite cheap lights, little LED lights, things like that. Um, just look for anything that vloggers use is normally a, a good, um, a good yeah. way. Um, all, our, all our kits out at the moment, so I've not been able to borrow any lights for today. But <laughs> no, That's great. And, and thank you very much for, for your input. And before we close, George, um, say that our listeners are interested in creating video and, and specifically in the communication side of things. Mm -hmm. Do you have, can you recommend any, could be a book or, or somebody to follow, um, any, any resources that you think would be helpful for our listeners? Yeah, well, I, I think the, the truth is um, I wouldn't send you down the road of reading any books about video mm. um, purely because they are the ones that I'm aware of are very technical. Mm. So it's likely to send you off in a bit of a, a spiral. You know, right. I think that it's, it's too complicated. You know, I mean, admittedly, I am actually writing a book at the moment about video, but it's, it's much more focused on brand storytelling and that type of stuff because the technical ins and outs of video can get very, very specific. My, my, go I'm on. sorry to cut you off here. I'm just, I'm just curious. Do you have a title already or? It's, yeah, it's called Resonance. Resonance. Yeah, okay. Resonance. Yeah, Resonance. When... How to, how to, how to unleash your brand's potential with video. Nice. Yeah. And yeah. looking forward to it. When I, do you know already when it will be published? Uh, well, we're first draft at the moment. So, um, that's the that's the, uh, the the big kind of milestone, which is now it's going out for people to read, uh, beta nice. readers. So oh, well it shouldn't be too long. So I'm hoping within the next few months. It's been quite a long journey to write it, I have to say. Um, Congratulations! Yeah, well done. I, I'd say for anybody, uh, just to f finish off, if you're looking to, if you want to do the video yourself and you're looking for technical um, advice on doing that, I would recommend going on things like. Go on YouTube, just go for, look for any um, vlogger who's, there's so many experts on, on video, on the technical aspects of video, and you'll get loads of cool ideas. If that's your thing, you know, if you're into actually the, the recording, most people aren't, most people are more about how do I communicate better? Um, and they want to use video as a tool. So for me, that book, Story Brand, is probably one of the best books, I think. Um, also, as, as I'm sure you'll agree, key person of influence. <laughs> um, now it's got nothing to do with video, but it's all about, you know, how do you communicate with your business and how do you actually, you know, it's, it's got lots of things in there. Yeah. They're sort of my two, two go-to books. Um, and then if you go on things like LinkedIn learning, uh, Udemy, like all those sort of places, there are loads of courses. Um, yeah. If you want to get a little bit more, you know, good with your, your video, but I would always say video is the, the tool. You know, it's technically, there are loads of ways to make it look better, but you'll probably get to a point where you will have to work with a, a professional to get it done properly. But just remember that the video is no good if 
if you haven't told your story in the right way and if you haven't communicated properly. So that's the part you should be focusing on. You know, how do I actually communicate my message correctly? And then, then you stick it on film. Absolutely. And George, thank you so much. It's been, it's been great. And before we close, is there anything else that you'd like to, to tell our listeners? Is there anything that you would have liked me to ask you and I haven't done it? Any, any, any final thoughts? Um, I don't think so. I mean, we've, we've gone through the usual, um, the usual gamut of stuff I like to talk about. I, I would just say that, you know, we are in the video age right now. You know, it's the one thing that can give you an edge at the moment that not everyone has got. So everybody's got a really amazing website. You can build an amazing website using, you know, WordPress and it doesn't cost you very much money. Everyone's got great websites. Um, you know, everybody's got great sales brochures, but video is still something that people haven't broken into as much. But when you look at the statistics for video use you just have to look at consumer behavior you know video is going to account for like 82 percent of all internet traffic next year that's what they say um now it's uh, you have 60 percent of all advertising spend in the uk is now on digital advertising and video is the fastest growing format of all those so if you think that's the trend you know You've got access to people 24-7 wherever they are via their smartphones. So if you start hitting them with videos, that's gonna it will work wonders for your company. So get on board if you haven't already. <laughs> yeah. No, and and I agree with you, George. And what I've noticed, I'm not I'm not an expert in this, but I've noticed that this trend already started a few years ago. So a oh, few yeah. years ago we started to see these the power of video but it seems to me that it becomes even better even more every single year so it's yeah. it's not decreasing so the importance and of video is not going down it's actually going up yeah. every single year definitely yeah. I and mean, we've got 5g on its way that's going to make a big difference as well like the speeds that you can share information um it's just something that's here to stay you know it's we've been captured by the moving image since they first invented it back in the 19th century, you know, when they just had, um, you know, really short frames of just horses running along, they would have, you know, they'd bring pictures to life, um, Charlie Chaplin movies, all the way through to people just putting stuff out on YouTube. Now it's, it's never going to go away really. Yeah. It's here to stay. George, thank you so much again. It's been a pleasure. I'm sure our listeners will learn a lot and, um, if we have a chance, let's see, after these madness stops uh, in, in the world, then it would be great to, to catch up in London. And, but in the meantime, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciated it. All the very best with your business, with your, with your life. Let's keep in touch. No worries. Thanks very much for having me on. It's been great. If you enjoyed this episode of the Ideas on Stage podcast, there are many more you might like. So please subscribe, leave us a review and tell us what you think. You can find many more ideas on business communication at ideasonstage.com or by searching for Ideas on Stage on iTunes, YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening and goodbye for now.